Hey everyone, this is Don Guccione. Thank you so much for checking out this YouTube video on fasting. So I'm making this video to go along with a blog post I'm doing on a healthy pre-Thanksgiving plan for the month of November. Uh, basically not using the holiday season as an excuse to allow the entire month of November to be filled with eating, drinking, and making merry and not doing any sort of exercise. Uh, it's great to enjoy some of our favorite holiday foods, uh, but it can get a little bit out of control if we're not careful. So this is what I'm doing the blog post about. Um, and part of the plan I developed for myself includes fasting. So the time of this video, I'm just coming to the end of a multi-day fast. So it's gonna be about 68 hours total. Um, so a little over two days and feeling great and wanted to share how the experience has been going and some tips that might be helpful. So for fasting, um, top tip is to do a little bit of research before you try any sort of fasting and look at all the potential health benefits of fasting, whether that be intermittent fasting, 24 hour, one meal a day type of fast or a multi-day fast. So there's a lot of benefits and potential reasons. I would personally recommend not to utilize fasting strictly as a tool for weight loss. Um, in particular, multi-day fast to say um, that's gonna be a sort of a quick fix to lose some weight. Um, just because there's a lot of science that goes into potential benefits for it. Um, and if you're not careful with just jumping right into, I'm going to do a multi-day fast to lose five pounds without understanding the, the science behind it and the preparation that's needed. It could um, lead to some potential sticky situations. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so tips to start off with fasting. Uh, similar to if you think about the concept of running, if you haven't been doing any running or any sort of training, and you decide you're going to go run, run a 10K, which is around six miles, you might be able to do that. So you might be able to actually physically run 10 kilometers. Um, you're not going to feel that great throughout the event. And after it, you're probably going to have some sore muscles, maybe some sore joints. Um, ju just in general, for most people, that's not going to be a great experience is to go from complete lack of training to running a race, you know, of any significant distance. So personally, I did run 10 kilometers for the first time this year. I did a fair amount of training for that. So that included running, that including stretching, weightlifting. Uh, so by the time I got to the day of running 10 kilometers, I felt decently prepared and it was a good experience. And I think I got some benefits from it um, without you know, setting myself back and being so sore I couldn't move and do anything for a week. Um, so similar concept of fasting. It's a different metabolic pathway than most of us are typically accustomed to doing. So spending some time researching and preparing for any sort of extended fast is a good idea. Similar to running the 10K, you may be able to pull off doing a multi-day fast without any sort of preparation, like just, you know, eating three meals a day and snacking and then stop eating for three days, five days, you might be able to pull it off. I don't think it will be a very pleasant experience and I don't think it would be a sustainable way of achieving the benefits of fasting and probably not something that you'd look to replicate after experiencing going from basically zero to 60 that quickly with fasting. So some ways that you could look into this, I'm gonna take some tips from Dr. Jason Fung. I'd recommend doing a Google search. Um, he's got a lot of great materials out there and is actually a medical doctor, so can give, give you some of the science behind fasting. Um, but if you haven't done any sort of intermittent fasting, a great way to start off is to eliminate snacking during the day. So strictly just eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, stop eating and drinking anything with calories at 6 or 7 p.m. and make sure that whatever time you stop eating is a time you can give yourself 12 hours until you eat breakfast. So that would be a great way to, to practice getting ready for 
intermittent or longer fasting is just to get yourself out of the habit of snacking um, because the idea behind fasting is you're going to your body is going to be using stored energy um, rather than energy coming from food so if you're snacking throughout the day you're giving bo your body constant influxes of glucose so it's going to raise your blood sugar and that's what your metabolism is going to be accustomed to um, that's where your body and your mind is going to be accustomed to like okay i'm getting my energy from this so if i'm feeling a little bit groggy i'll have a snack and i'll feel better um, so if you're able to eliminate the snacking in between your meals that will start getting your body more accustomed to using some of the stored energy that is available um, so another another thing to think about related to stored energy you want your body to um, start getting comfortable in a state of ketosis so people can associate that with the keto diet eating low carb um, really what that means is your body is utilizing ketones for energy rather than blood glucose so utilizing stored fat for energy rather than um, glucose coming from food that you're eating or from stored um, glycogen so that's to be successful on a multi-day fast your body has to be accustomed to running in ketosis mode as opposed to constantly looking for glucose for energy so after doing the 12-hour fast um, and, and this is from personal experience um, stretch it to 16 hours so if you stop eating at 6 p.m you get to six in the morning it means you skip breakfast so you don't have a meal um, in the morning first thing and if you're using 6 p.m 6 a.m gives you 12 hours and then if you eat a meal at 10 a.m it gives you 16 hours so you could have yourself a nice black coffee in the morning some tea some water um, basically anything that does not have calories or artificial sweetener and the reason you want to avoid artificial sweetener on a fast is that uh, it can trigger an insulin response which is something that you want to avoid to experience the benefits of fasting so some people would say that if you want to be strict and get the benefits of fasting you want to avoid any anything other than water basically and there's probably some validity to that and if you're doing fasting for therapeutic reasons uh, maybe some reasons to do strict water fast water and salt um, but for me I I've found based on the research I've done in personal experience that black coffee is fine tea is fine water uh, but just just watch out for those artificial sweeteners if you're trying to get the benefits of fasting after um, 16 hours you know keep stretching it out and at some point um, you can get to 24 hours so you have basically one meal per day and you're at your um, throughout the day you're not having anything of caloric substance it's it's liquids it's the mostly water um, black coffee tea and then you're having you're getting your nutrients from one meal per day so my recommendation based on experience is get comfortable with 24-hour fasts make sure you've done quite a few of those they don't have to be in a row but just be comfortable with a 24-hour fast make sure you're feeling good about that before you attempt a multi-day fast um, another tip as you start stretching out the fasting window be mindful of hydration so a lot of people when they experience hunger when they're first starting off a longer period of fasting it can actually be your body's cue for for thirst um, that you're you're maybe starting to get dehydrated um, so make sure you're drinking plenty of water um, another thing is to be mindful of um, electrolytes so in particular salt um, that's something that if you're doing a low carbohydrate diet or a fasting period you're not getting the natural levels of sodium that you would be from food um, and, and your, your body does need that so tips you can do for that is, is just add some salt to your beverages um, a little bit in your coffee a little bit in your tea you're not really going to notice it you can add it to water it gives it like that nice mineral taste um, don't over salt it obviously uh, but be, being mindful of hydration and getting proper sodium during a longer fast is going to be very important 
So I mentioned uh, my protocol with the um, black coffee, tea, water primarily. When I'm doing a multi-day fast, something that I've found helpful is making myself um, some type of a broth with spices. So, you know, just some hot water with some salt and pepper, um, maybe some chili spice, some red pepper flake, you know, whatever you can, can find up in the spice cabinet that might be tasty. Um, it's not going to add any sort of calories, uh, but it will give you something where you, you're having, you know, something of substance in the evening. If you're used to having a meal in the evening, um, it'll, it'll give you the salt um, primarily. That's a good reason to have something like that. Uh, another thing I tried out recently to get some salt intake, um, something a little different is if you think of like sauerkraut or pickles, as long as they're made sort of like the more natural pickling methods where you're just using the company's just using water and pickling spices, um, not vinegar or any sort of artificial colors or anything like that. Um, taking some of that brine from pickles or from sauerkraut, um, and that's going to give you a decent amount of salt. So what I found to be helpful is uh, maybe like one part brine and three parts water. Um, so just make yourself a little beverage that you can have to keep up that electrolyte intake and give yourself a little bit of flavor. Um, again, if you're doing, if you're looking into people that are advocating for strict fast, that may not qualify. Uh, to me, it seems all right. It seems like it's not going to have anything of caloric substance, going to help you get the electrolytes and give you a little bit of flavor to sort of break up the, uh, um, the monotony of, of not eating during this period of time. So energy and exercise. I've found from my personal experience that once I get past the initial 24 hour period, if there are any sort of um, challenges that they go away and my energy levels feel great um, throughout you know, the remainder of that 48 hour plus fast. Um, the first time I did a multi-day fast, the, the first day was challenging for me to get through like after that period where I would usually have dinner if I was doing a 24 hour fast. Afterwards, I felt great. Um, this time I didn't notice that challenge with the initial 24 hours. So just maybe combination of circumstances, um, but maybe coming with more experience and, and my body getting used to this, um, having done it before and knowing what to expect. Um, so I was able to do some light exercise. So that's another thing. If you're doing fasting and you're on an exercise plan, be mindful that you might have to adjust it slightly when you first start off intermittent fasting or longer fasting. So for my personal example, I'm not going to be doing any sort of high intensity tr interval training during a fasting period that's going to thrash my body. Um, that, that's just not something I'm going to be doing when I'm restricting um, and any type of caloric intake. It's, it's just a lot of stress to your body and naturally um, fasting is a hermetic stressor. So being mindful of what you're doing as an overall picture when you're intentionally fasting is important. Uh, what I was able to do is some steady state cardio. Um, so some walking, some skiing on a Nordic track machine. I did a little bit of weight training um, and that felt great. Uh, but I wasn't doing sets to failure, one rep max is something that would, would cause a lot of stress on the body, and that worked out very well. Um, so then a word on breaking your fast. So whether that be an intermittent fast, 24 hour, or in particular multi-day fast, from my experience, you want to make sure you're, you're doing that with a smaller meal. Um, so and also a good quality meal. So, so not grabbing a bag of chips, um, slice of pizza, thinking of something that, that has really wholesome ingredients um, that you've eaten before, and, and really just to get your body back into the mode of, of having some energy from food, some nutrients, rather than having to access stored energy for a period of time. So I'm feeling good enough where I could definitely keep this fast going. Um, interested in maybe trying that out in the future. Um, but given that tomorrow is Thanksgiving, as I'm recording this video, I want to be mindful that 
uh, breaking a multi-day fast with a decadent meal that is foods that I don't eat all the time is probably not the greatest strategy. And I do want to enjoy Thanksgiving. So what I'm going to be doing is making myself a nice smaller meal um, later today, um, maybe like a little after lunchtime, maybe have a little something else um, around dinner time, just to get my body back into the mode of, um, of having food before I get into um, Thanksgiving Day itself. So hope this was helpful. Um, again, definitely do some research of your own. Fasting is not for everybody, in particular multi-day fast. You should probably consult with a medical professional if you're thinking about trying out any sort of fasting. Uh, but there's lots of resources. I mentioned Dr. Jason Fung. There's a lot of other folks that, that have some information um, and, and really the scientific basis for the different types of fasting and potential benefits from it. So thanks for checking this out and we'll see you next time.